You are here because you want to learn. Tama ba ako? Tama ka. In this episode, I will discuss key concepts in the professional education, specifically John Piaget's Cognitive Development Theory. I am Sir Lau Pasqua, and welcome to Prof. Ed with Sir Lau. John Piaget was born in Switzerland in the late 1800s. He dedicated his life as a psychologist and developmental biologist. His name always rings a bell in the field of education because he is the first person to elaborate the cognitive development of humans. So, how did it all start? In 1920s, the time when IQ test was a subject for study and development, Piaget worked at Binet Institute as one of the IQ test developers. He observed that children had intriguing answers to questions in that IQ test which requires logical thinking. Children tended to make incorrect answers with this level of questions. Through this, Piaget believed that these incorrect answers revealed the differences between adult and children thinking. By then, Piaget studied children from infancy to adolescence using natural and controlled observations and clinical interviews. In fact, his subject to this study was his own three children and his colleagues' children. Through his observations, he found out that children do not think lesser than adults but they think in different ways. He then proposed stages in cognitive development which are sensory motor stage, pre-operational stage, concrete operational stage, and formal operational stage. Children's development in each stage is determined by biological maturation and interaction to environment. He believed that these stages are always in sequential order. This means one stage cannot come first without the prior stage. He also believed that these stages cannot be skipped and that it marked new intellectual abilities upon reaching it. Gets more? Gets go! Cognitive development theory considers children like little scientists, wherein they take active roles in learning process rather than like empty vessels waiting to be filled in. Let's take a look at the first stage of cognitive development, which is the sensory motor stage. Sensory motor stage begins at birth until two years of age. It is called sensory motor because in this stage, children's thinking involves senses and motor skills like seeing, touching, and moving. This marks an individual's first leap from biological beings to psychological beings. Here are its major characteristics and developmental changes. The infant learns about the world through their senses and through their actions like moving around and exploring its environment. During the sensory motor stage, a range of cognitive abilities develop. These include object permanence, self-recognition, deferred imitation, and representational play. They relate to the emergence of the general symbolic function which is the capacity to represent the world mentally. At about 8 months, the infant will understand the permanence of objects and that they still exist even if they can see them and the infant will search for them when they disappear. During this stage, infant lives in the present. It does not have a mental picture of the world stored in its memory. Therefore, it does not have a sense of object permanence. If it cannot see something, then it does not exist. This is why you can hide a toy from an infant while it watches, but it will not search for the object once it has gone out of sight. The main achievement during this stage is object permanence, knowing that an object still exists even if it is hidden. It requires the ability to form a mental representation or schema of the object. Towards the end of this stage, the general symbolic function begins to appear where children show in their play that they can use one object to stand for another. 
language starts to appear because they realize that words can be used to represent objects and feelings. The child begins to be able to store information that it knows around the world. We call it and label it. The second stage is pre-operational stage, which spans from 2 years to 7 years of age. This stage is called pre-operational because children have not yet mastered the ability to perform mental operations. Children's thinking during this stage is governed by what is seen rather than by logical principles. Here are the following accomplishments of pre-operational stage. First one is semantic function. During this stage, the child develops the ability to think using symbols and signs. Symbols represent something or someone else. For example, a doll may symbolize a baby, child, or an adult. The second one is egocentrism. This stage is actually characterized by egocentrism. Children believe that their way of thinking is the only way to think. The third one is decentering. A pre-operational child has difficulty in seeing more than one dimension or aspects of situation, and this is called decentering. The fourth one is animism. Children tend to refer to inanimate objects as if they have lifelike qualities and are capable of actions. The next one is seriation. They lack the ability of classification or grouping objects into categories. And the last one is conservation. It refers to the understanding that certain properties of an object remain the same despite a change in their appearance. By two years of age, children have made some progress towards detaching their thought from physical world. However, have not yet developed operational or logical thought characteristic of later stages. Thinking is still intuitive or based on subjective judgments about situations and still egocentric or centered on the child's own view of the world. Are you ready for the third stage? The third stage is called concrete operational stage, which spans from 7 to 11 years old. The stage is called concrete because children can think logically much more successfully if they can manipulate real or concrete materials or picture of them. Piaget considered the concrete stage a major turning point in the child's cognitive development because it marks the beginning of logical or operational thought. This means the child can work things out internally in their head rather than physically try things out in the real world. Children can conserve number at the age of 6, mass at the age of 7, and weight at the age of 9. Conservation is the understanding that something stays the same in quantity even though its appearance changes. But operational thought is only effective here if child asks the reason about materials that are physically present. Children at this stage will tend to make mistakes or be overwhelmed when asked to reason about abstract or hypothetical problems. Here are this stage major characteristics and developmental changes. During this stage, children begin to think logically about concrete events. They begin to understand the concept of conservation. Children can mentally reverse things. And children also become less egocentric and begin to think about how other people might think and feel. The last stage of cognitive development is formal operational stage, which spans from 11 years and beyond. This stage involves an increase in logic, the ability to use deductive reasoning, and an understanding of abstract ideas. At this point, People become capable of seeing multiple potential solutions to problems and think more scientifically about the world around them. The ability to thinking about the abstract ideas and situations is the key hallmark of the formal operational stage. The ability to systematically plan for the future and reason out about hypothetical situations are also critical abilities that emerge during this stage. It is important to note that Piaget did not view children's intellectual development as a quantitative process. 
That is, kids do not just add more information and knowledge to their existing knowledge as they get older. Instead, Piaget suggested that there is a qualitative change in how children think as they gradually process through these four stages. A child at age 7 doesn't have more information about the world than he is in age 2. There is a fundamental change in how he thinks about the world. Aside from the stages of development, it is embedded in Piaget's theory some important concepts about cognitive development process. So, let's study the key concepts on the cognitive development theory. Number 1. Schema Piaget defined a schema as a cohesive, repeatable action, sequence possessing component actions that are tightly interconnected and governed by a core meaning. In more simple terms, Piaget called the schema the basic building block of intelligent behavior, a way of organizing knowledge. Indeed, it is useful to think of schemas as units of knowledge, each relating to one aspect of the world, including objects, actions, and abstract concepts. Wadsworth in 2004 suggests that schemata, or the plural of schema, be thought of as index cards filed in the brain, each one telling an individual how to react to incoming stimuli or information. When Piaget talked about the development of a person's mental process, he was referring to the increase in the number of complexity of schemata that the person had learned. Piaget emphasized the importance of schemas in cognitive development and described how they were developed or acquired. A schema can be defined as a set of linked mental representations of the world which we use both to understand and to respond to situations. The assumption is that we restore these mental representations and apply them when needed. The second one is the process of adaptation. John Piaget viewed intellectual growth as a process of adaptation or adjustment to the world. This happens through assimilation, accommodation, and equilibration. Piaget defined assimilation as the cognitive process of fitting new information into existing cognitive schemas, perceptions, and understanding. Overall beliefs and understanding of the world do not change as a result of the new information. This means that when you are faced with new information, you make sense of this information by referring to the information you already have, then you try to fit the new and the old one. The second one is accommodation. Piaget defined accommodation as the cognitive process of revising existing cognitive schemas, perceptions, and understanding so that new information can be incorporated. This happens when the existing schema does not work and needs to be changed to deal with the new object or situation. The third one is equilibration. Piaget believed that all human thought seeks order and is uncomfortable with contradictions and inconsistencies in knowledge structures. In other words, we seek equilibrium in our cognitive structures. Equilibrium occurs when a child's schema can deal with most new information through assimilation. However, an unpleasant state of disequilibrium occurs when new information cannot be fitted into existing schemas. In total, Piaget's study on cognitive development breaks beliefs and later on was widely applied not only in parenting but largely on educational processes. Schools and educators used Piaget's findings as basis in crafting and reorganizing learning experiences for learners. Indeed, there is a big impact made due to this discovery. However, a number of psychologists questioned, developed, and even criticized the study of Piaget. The names are Lawrence Kohlberg, Lev Vygotsky, and Jerome Bruner. Do you want to know more how the rest of history was written? Subscribe to this channel and I will give you more comprehensible discussion on professional education topics. This is Sir Lau Pasqua. Thank you for listening and see ya!